Muy buenas tardes. Un saludo al misionero Miguel Bermúdez Marín. Good afternoon. Greetings to the missionary Miguel Bermúdez Marín and to all the ministers and to all the brethren in different countries. Today, Monday, January 2nd of this year 2023, it is truly a blessing and privilege to be able to greet each and every one of you those who are gathered together in the different countries, since a day like today is a holiday in many places, and you're taking advantage to continue studying and to have this fellowship one another around the world. It tells us in the Gospel according to John in chapter 6, verse 22, and on, and it says, The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there save that one wherein two his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit, came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread, after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. See, the human being always, and most especially those who have been in the divine program, in every age and in every dispensation, always have had the tendency to seek God, the things of God. And that is what the human being feels in his heart. He knows that there is a creator of the heavens and the earth, and there is something in his soul that makes them seek and inquire God things. The human being per se is religious. On one occasion, Brother Branham spoke about it. And there he showed us that he already comes with that feeling and that inclination of religion. And the chosen ones of God, the children of God, and every human being who believes in God, always seek for God. Always, which is where one should be seeking God, we should always seek God in good times and in bad times. In other words, when things are good and when things are bad or with difficulties or problems. People should always seek God. And when things are good, also. And to seek God in the time in which the person is living and the program of God for which the person has been placed on this planet Earth and to be a part of that program it is a great blessing, and it is the responsibility of each person of each human being, and the chosen ones of God, even more. They know and are aware that God has a program, and in that program, they are part of it. God has made the human being a partner of His. In other words, He has made the human being part of His program because we are His program. We are part of that program. Therefore, automatically, when a chosen one of God, that attribute of God, comes to this planet Earth, the moment will come when He makes contact with that program and seeks for the way to approach that program. And when he arrives and approaches that program and receives it, then he becomes part of that program, 
being in this earthly body. Because before coming to this planet Earth, we were already part of Him because we were in Him. We were in His program, but in His thoughts. And when we arrived to this planet Earth as an attribute of God, a thought of God, we come near that program and it's like a magnet. There he makes contact with his program and that attribute becomes the reality of that thought, of that program that God already designed since before the foundation of the world. That is why back then they weren't looking for Jesus. They didn't find him in that place where he had already given them bread. In other words, he had given them food and they went looking for him. But those were followers of Jesus because something else. He continues to say on verse 25, And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when comest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. There were many followers of Jesus, but because of other things. And they were, let us say, supposedly believing in Jesus, but it was because they were very comfortable with the trajectory that Jesus was having with his disciples. And they were taking advantage of all of that. And they were eating, they were doing very well. Until a moment came when they were scandalized. Because notice, this chapter teaches us many things. And remember that the fulfillment of the of his coming for the last day, the coming of the Son of Man with his angels would be parallel in everything to the first coming. On the 27th verse of chapter 6, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him had God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him who he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, What signs showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Notice, they there are tempting Jesus to do miracles for them to believe. When God is not supposed to do the things that people tell him to do, he is not there to please anyone. Rather, he is there to fulfill the perfect will of God. What does thou work? Our father did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Notice, as it is written, notice they take out the scriptures and begin to show Jesus that they are believers in Moses, of what Moses brought, of all that teaching that they were reading to Jesus from the book where it says that during the wilderness or desert they ate bread, manna from heaven something that had happened 
They took out the scriptures to him. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. In other words, notice that there he is showing them and he begins to speak to them little by little. Things a bit hard. Hard in the sense that he is already beginning to speak what he is going to tell them more openly later on. He that eateth not his flesh nor drinketh his blood shall not have life abiding in him. But here he begins little by little to speak to them stronger words. Notice it says, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. Notice they began to murmur what Jesus was telling them. He was revealing to them there that it was the fulfillment of the coming of the Lord, of the fulfillment of what the Hebrew people were waiting for, the coming of the Messiah. And they began to murmur. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? Who is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets that they shall be all taught of God. Everyone will be taught by God. That is why in Habakkuk also says, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea. And the teaching that Jesus was given there was for eternal life. The teaching that Jesus was bringing in his first coming was so that whoever believed in him would obtain salvation and would obtain by being born again by believing in the coming of the Messiah in his first coming as a sacrifice that was going to carry out on Calvary's cross with that teaching he was bringing the knowledge so that whoever that believed in him would obtain eternal life it was required to believe in the first coming of the Lord and it is required to have and receive the teaching at the second coming of the Son of Man with his angels to obtain the result of that teaching, which is by believing that fulfillment, one will obtain the eternal and glorified body. After having believed and received the sacrifice through the fulfillment of the first coming of the Lord, which is the revelation of who Jesus Christ is. Upon this rock I will build my church, said Jesus. 
there to Peter upon the foundation of the revelation and upon the foundation of the revelation of the second coming of the Lord it is upon that foundation that every chosen of God will obtain every believer in the Lord will obtain the eternal and glorified body without that teaching without believing in the teaching that God is bringing at this time through the fulfillment of the coming of the Son of Man with his angels without that teaching no person can be transformed and raptured just as without the knowledge of the teaching of the first coming of the Lord no one can receive the new birth he goes on to say In, in verse 45, it is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard, and heard, learned of the Father, cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your father did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And notice here, let us read here a moment in the book, in this message, this day the scripture is fulfilled, the Reverend William Branham tells us, he says on page 8 of the book in Spanish, it says, but I still think of how striking it must have been. Think of it, the Messiah. Why did they fail to see him? Because their very leaders that ought to have known him, that ought to have been versed in the scripture, that ought to have been understanding of the scriptures, they belittle this man and said he's an illegitimate child to begin with we wouldn't believe that see notice they begin to look at the Jesus they know and they say how is it possible that this will be fulfilled in that person We wouldn't believe that. Years later, we don't believe that. We would die, says Brother Branham, for the purpose to say that he was a virgin-born son. And he'll come to pass someday that the very things that we see Jehovah doing today Men in the ages to come, if there is, and the ages to come, is the dispensation of the kingdom, where seven stages are traveled or journeyed, and then the last one, the eighth, will die for the things that we're talking about today. And he writes, the 144 and he didn't write anything else and he makes two stars and an arrow from the top to the bottom in that small paragraph and he writes they will die for the message he says for the things that we're talking about today you have to do it when the mark of the beast comes on and you're not allowed to preach the gospel this way when the great union of churches comes together which is in order right now for the world church you'll have to seal your testimony with your own life to this you must believe it now 
sea, In other words, there will come a time when only up to certain moments there will no longer be opportunity to receive and believe in the fulfillment of the first coming of the Lord as the Lamb of God. And that time has already come and gone. So, there is also a time when it is fulfilled that there is no more opportunity to believe in the fulfillment of the second coming of the Lord. And the next thing is to give their life for the message in the Great Tribulation. They will not be able to be transformed. If those priests could rise up that condemn him on page 9, would not condemn him. Remember that after they are there, those who rejected Jesus and those who condemned Jesus, once there they can make no choice to believe. The one who is already there can no longer change the situation. The decision is now. Just like those who are in the Great Tribulation, which is the fifth dimension open, they will not be able to decide by then to believe, so that God will then transform them. So it happened with the rich man. But then if Lazarus cannot come and dip his finger in water and place the water in my tongue, but then notice, may someone appear. Or let me go there to tell my brothers so that they will not go through what I'm going through here, this torment. Notice how there they had the knowledge of what they did wrong to reject the fulfillment of God's program corresponding to the time in which they live, as it happens in the days of Noah. Those who were disobedient in the time of Noah, Jesus went and preached to them. So is also this third pool, which will also impact the lost. They will also be told that they despised the mercy of God for the last time. And the time will come where they will no longer be able to turn back. The decision they have made will be parallel to the decision made by the rich man and the decision made by those who rejected in the time of Noah, the mercy of God in that time, which was Noah. For the mercy of God is always in the prophets sent by God in every age and in every dispensation, and the divine judgment as well, because the prophets are the blessing and they are also the judgment. And they will no longer be able at this time to turn back and say, now I see it, after they have crossed the line, or after they have rejected even though they have kept quiet, but they have decided rather to stay with the manna that was sent from heaven, as it was there in the time of Moses. They stayed with the letter. They stayed with the promises that God made. But they did not accept what God was doing through Jesus. They stayed believing the letter, but not the fulfillment of that letter. And notice something here. That our brother William Soto Santiago spoke to us in the message. May God give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation to work united in the work of God. Preach on August 1st of 2009 in Monterrey, Mexico. It says, And for the dealing, or to continue the dealing of God with the Hebrew people in the second part of the 70th week, the ministry corresponding to Moses and Elijah are the ministries of Moses and Elijah being operated by the Holy Spirit, which is the only one that has ministry. That is why the Jews are waiting for Elijah, a man of this time where the minister of Elijah is operated by the Holy Spirit.
And they are waiting for Moses, that is a prophet like Moses. And that is the promise that God has to fulfill. Remember, it is the Holy Spirit, the one who operates the ministry. And the Messiah will be a prophet like Moses. That promise will be fulfilled in him, because the seven trumpet, which are Moses and Elijah, and the seven seal, which is the coming of the Lord, are the same thing. The seven trumpet and the seven seal are the coming of the Lord, because he comes with his angels. That is why he sends his angels with the great voice of a trumpet, in other words, with the message of the gospel of the kingdom, the message for the dispensation of the kingdom, to call and gather together 144,000 Hebrews, 12,000 from each tribe according to Revelation 7. And the angel that comes with the seal of the living God, you will notice, is the one that carries out that work. Because in him, the seal of the living God, which is the Holy Spirit, will be operating the ministry of Moses and the ministry of Elijah. It is as simple as that. So, Notice, the Jews are waiting for Elisha, they are waiting for Moses, and they are waiting for the Messiah, and the three that they are waiting for, they believe that it will be actually a person from the time where that promise is fulfilled. They are waiting for Elijah, and they are waiting, therefore, for a man from the time where that promise is fulfilled, a man born on this earth through a man and a woman, and they are waiting for Moses, a prophet like Moses, a man of this earth in whom that ministry is, and they are waiting for the Messiah, a man to be born on this earth, and in whom the Spirit of God is fulfilling that promise. That is what the Hebrew people is waiting for, and they are not going to receive anything else, and they do not receive a prophet who is already dead. He has to be alive. In other words, they have to receive a man of flesh and bones, not a man who is already dead. When Brother William says here, a man that is dead, he is referring to the veil of flesh. Because the Son of God, the Chosen of God, and the Prophets of God do not die. When they die, they die in their earthly body. But their spirit continues living. It is a soul of God. It is an eternal soul. And they continue living. But the veil of flesh, where they were manifested on this earth, when it ends, that earthly body dies, the one they dwell in. But now, notice what it says here. When Elijah left, Elijah in that body in which he was living, representing those that are going to be raptured, left. But that doesn't mean that the spirit of Elijah ended. He came in another man, in another veil of flesh, in Elisha. Just like in the time of Moses, Moses fulfilled the program corresponding to the time God sent him, and his body died. He finished his days on this planet Earth. However, his spirit, the ministerial spirit of Moses, being a dispensational prophet as well, that spirit rested upon Joshua because he had to be the spirit that would bring that people into the promised land. He would have to be, and he had to be, a dispensational ministerial spirit. Therefore, there we see the ministerial spirit of Moses resting upon Joshua. But the spirit does not die. That spirit, which is of God, the spirit of God, that spirit of a prophet, that ministry of a prophet, doesn't die, it's eternal. I am talking about the ministerial spirit. And notice he goes on to say, and they do not receive 
a prophet that is already dead. He must be alive and that speaks and that will give them the message of the great voice of the trumpet of Isaiah chapter 27 verse 13 which is the one that will call and gather with which the lost tribes will be called and gathered together with the two tribes the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin to consolidate them 12 tribes into one kingdom the kingdom of David being restored and the kingdom of God being established on earth that will be the two sticks in the hand of the prophet the two sticks in the hand of Moses and Elisha those are the two sticks I am reading this I made a pause there those are the two I am saying this, those are the two sticks in the hand of a prophet. In other words, the two sticks in the hand of those ministries of Moses and Elijah. There is a place where he also writes it. We will find it later. Our brother William continues to say, and since it has been said that there will be a great tent cathedral where great wonders will take place, great miracles, notice, there will be the ministries of the two olive trees, of the two candlesticks, of the two anointed ones that stand before the presence of God. According to Zechariah chapter 4, verse 11 to 14, which are the two trees of olive and the two olive branches. Also Revelation chapter 11, verse 1 to 14. That is what is promised for this end time. And for the dealing, or God will continue dealing with the Hebrew people in the second part of the 70th week, the ministry corresponded to Moses and Elijah. They are the ministries of Moses and Elijah being operated by the Holy Spirit, who is the only one who has ministry. That is why the Jews are waiting for Elijah, a man of this time where the ministry of Elijah is operated by the Holy Spirit, and they are waiting for Moses, that is, a prophet like Moses. And that is the promise that God has to fulfill. And the Messiah will be a prophet like Moses. In him shall that promise be fulfilled. Because the seventh trumpet, which are Moses and Elijah, and the seventh seal, which is the coming of the Lord, are the same thing. The seventh trumpet and the seventh seal are the coming of the Lord. Because he comes with his angels. That is why he sends his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. In other words, with the message of the gospel of the kingdom, the message of the dispensation of the kingdom, to call and gather together 144 Hebrews, 12,000 from each tribe, according to Revelation chapter 7. Now, notice how it tells us here in the message we were reading today the scripture has been fulfilled it says let us just a minute continue here where we stopped let us finish just a little bit further down on the scripture on chapter 6 of John, verse. Let us see on verse 50. That's where we left off. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your father did eat manna and are dead, 
He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. This thing said he in the synagogue, and he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore his disciples, when they had heard this said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, He said unto them, Does this offend you? What if ye shall see the Son of Man ascending up where he was before? And there he starts talking about something else that makes all those who are there doubt, that is, to make that word hard. It is the spirit that quicken it, the flesh profited nothing. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But they are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my father from that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him notice many of Jesus disciples already turned their backs to him because of that that Jesus was saying there such a glorious revelation such a great teaching that Jesus was giving them there then they began to look more at but isn't he the son of Joseph he is an illegitimate son they began to look for fault to the incarnate word and they began to mock and murmur and criticize Jesus Now notice over here where we were going to continue reading on the message. This day the scripture has been fulfilled. He goes on to say on page 9, if those priests could rise up that condemn him, would not condemn him. There is where we stopped and spoke about that rich man and also about the time of Noah and all of them. After they were already in that place, they had no opportunity to repent, but that rather divine judgment came upon them. The same thing will be with those who will already be in the great tribulation. They will no longer have an opportunity to say, now I believe. Or if we go a little bit before, Those who get to be seeing the fulfillment of what God is doing in the peak part of the vision of the great tent cathedral in the third pool, to believe. They have to get there to see everything that will be happening, then to believe. There will no longer be an opportunity to go back and say, now I believe, and then God fulfilled the promise of the transformation of their body. The divine program is not like that. He goes on to say, but you say, if I'd have been there, I will have done so and so. Well, that wasn't your age. But this is your age. This is the time. And now it can be said. Anybody can say, at that time I would have done this or that or the other. Well, you with this scripture and with this that has been read, that has been read on this occasion, what you are doing in this time is the same thing that you would be doing in the time of Jesus. The same attitude that you are assuming in the fulfillment of the divine program for this end time is the same attitude that you would have taken in the time of Jesus. You say, well, if it was here, the Bible said, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. See, they might say, but if He was present here, we would believe that. But if that is the same spirit of Him that is being operated, because God is the one who operates the ministry, and He is the one that operates that ministry that was in William Soto Santiago, it is the same one that is in our midst right now. He is in our midst. He is alive, operating everything that is being carried out. It is God himself, it is the same angel of the covenant, operating those ministries.
The Bible says, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Remember, it is God in Morphe. It is God changing His mask, His veil of flesh. But when that veil of flesh finishes fulfilling the purpose for which God was working, the ministry that he was working in that character or person in that veil of flesh, when he finishes, that earthly body dies. And God continues his program. And he continues fulfilling his program with another veil of flesh. Now remember, that the time will come where we will all be together, where we will all see each other, we will see Jesus in his glorified body. We will see Brother Branham. We will see our precious brother William Soto Santiago. We will see the messengers of the ages. We will see Abraham. We will see Adam. We will see Elijah. We will see them all in their eternal bodies. But now, we are seeing as the unseen. In other words, when we say this, is that we are seeing the manifestation of God by the works. As he said, if you do not believe in me, believe in the works. And the works that God would be fulfilling in this end time is Bring in the rapturing faith, that is to see the unseen, to see behind the veil, to see God working in the midst of his church, in the midst of the two cherubims of olive wood overlaid with gold in the most holy place. It is to see that fulfilled in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in this end time, in the manifestation that God is using in the midst of his church to bring to them the rapturing faith. He goes on to say, so he is here, but he is here as the world has civilized, become greater and educated more. He is here in the spiritual form, which they cannot kill or put to death. He died once. He cannot die again. He had to be made flesh in the order for God to put to death in the flesh for sin. But this time, he could never die. He says, it's the Holy Spirit. As Brother Branham says in one occasion, they can kill the man, but not the message. Now, how to think that they had them things against him, another thing, that he would not join any of their ranks. Then, you see, that still made him a bad person. He wouldn't join their organization, wouldn't join their priesthood, and he wouldn't have nothing to do with it. And then, beside all that, he tried to tear down what they had built up. He went to the temple. We call him a meek man. He was... But many times we misunderstand what meekness is. Now notice, we had read in this sixth chapter where he, in the verse 38, there he spoke and said, For I come down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. In other words, he came to do the will of God and not the will of man. Not what they wanted to hear from Jesus. When the devil said to him, when he was tempted, If you are the Son of God, make these stones become bread. Or throw yourself down this cliff. In other words, see how that spirit of the devil is also operated in people when you see that they try to say that they believe but if he does such a thing or such a thing happens if he does this I see such a thing then I believe that is a spirit is the same spirit that was there at that time in those 30 to 40 days that Jesus was tempted is that same spirit that is in that person trying to say that they believe but if they first see if you do greater works than Jesus or Brother Branham then we will believe a time will come for that 
Don't rush. Very soon. Now is the time of the teaching to obtain that rapturing faith. The vindication of all that God is doing has its moment. Soon. For them who are desiring and asking for it, it will be fulfilled. But for those who are going to say, now I believe, it will already be too late. Notice, Brother Branham goes on to say on page 9, Many times we misunderstand what meekness is. He was a man of compassion. But yet, we fail sometimes to understand what compassion is. When they say, no, no, you have to have compassion with that one, with the other one, or you have to be compassionate with this, with that. Notice the meaning of compassion. But yet we fail sometimes to understand what compassion is. No human sympathy is in compassion. But compassion is doing the will of God. He passed through the pool of Bethesda, the gate. There laid people, multitude of them. And he writes next to it, compassion equals is doing the will of God. He passed to the pool of Bethesda, the gate. They laid people, multitude of them. Multitude is not certain number, but there laid multitude, lame, blind, halt, withered. And he had compassion on the people, always. And he went to one person that was not lame, blind, halt, nor withered. Maybe he had a prostate trouble. Maybe he had some little infirmity that was retarded. He had it 38 years. It wasn't going to bother him. It wasn't going to kill him. He was laying on a pallet. And he said, Would thou be made whole? And the man said, I have nobody to put me in the water. But while I'm coming, well, someone steps down ahead of me. See, he could walk, he could see, he could get around, but he was just feeble. And Jesus said to him, rise up, take up your bed and go to your house. See, the creative word being spoken. And Jesus was questioned on that, for you remember the scripture said this, No wonder, if he would come to Jeffersonville tonight and make an act like that, they would still talk about him. But remember, he came to do one thing, was the will of God. Now that's found in John 5:19. You get the answer. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing. He is also looking at the unseen, that is, at the Father, to what we can't see, to the seventh dimension. But what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son. Now they ought to have known that that was the very vindication of the prophecy of Moses. And he writes, Vindication, Fulfillment. For the Lord your God shall rise up a prophet like unto me. Ye shall hearken unto him. Deuteronomy 18.15 Did you notice when he seen the man, he said, Jesus knew that he had been in this condition for many years? See, being a prophet, he saw that man in that condition and went down there and waved, waved his way around through those people Mincing through the crowd until he found that certain man. Passed by the lame, halt, blind, and withered, yet a man full of compassion. But compassion is doing the will of God. And there he also writes, Compassion is to do the will of God. Now, we find him as he would not join up with them. He would not have nothing to do in their ranks. Then he was an outcast, he would not have any. Besides that, he went into the temple one day, a man went in there and found the house of God just about contaminated as it is today. They were buying, selling, 
charging money, and he turned over the money tables, took ropes and plated them, and beat the money changers out of the temple. And he looked upon them with anger and said, It is written, Hallelujah, my father's house is a house of prayer, and you made it a den of thieves, and you with your traditions has made the commandment of God of none effect. Oh, could a bunch like that ever believe him? No, sir. They have been so hog wallowed in their muck of societies and filth of the day until they were so ecclesiastical frozen up, until they couldn't feel the vibrations of the power of the Almighty God. No wonder the little woman could touch his garment and get healed by it, and a drunken soldier could spit in his face and feel no virtue. Depends on how you approach it depends on what you're looking for. When you go to church, it depends on what you're looking for. But notice how there he tells us that they were so stuck in the mire of societies and everything. In other words, they came, they came with their own interest regarding society and everything that involves the whole society of the world. But when he began to open the scriptures to them in terms of the fulfillment of what God was doing, they didn't believe the opening of the scriptures. Rather, they stumbled over them. And they could not accept that word that took them out of that comfort that they had. And everything that Jesus had already done for them, they cast it aside. Everything that God had given them. He had given them bread. He had been feeding them. They were always very full. But when the moment of change came, when the shaking came, then they stopped walking with Jesus. Then they said that it wasn't like that. And remember, that is parallel with everything. This time. He goes on to say, now we see him standing there, no doubt, but what the people had already warned him, warned. The priest had warned the people, now he's coming over here next Sabbath, and when he does, don't you listen to him. See, the leaders already began to speak to the people. Look, when the Saturday comes, do not listen to Jesus, because notice all the things that Jesus has come out with. And they begin to prepare the people not to receive the Messiah, the Anointed One, the man who was giving them the bread of heaven, the true bread, the one who was giving them eternal life so that they could receive it by believing in him. When he does, don't you listen to him. Now, you might go and sit here, but don't pay no attention to what he says, because he don't belong to our group. He is an outcast. Notice, even to indispose the people to go to the place where the promise has already been spoken, that the teaching under the tent was going to be spoken and that the mystery of the seventh seal was going to be made known and the rapturing faith was going to be given to indispose the people to, even if they go, to not pay attention. Those are placing themselves as the religious leaders of that time who, notice how there Brother Branham speaks in this post. They were persons who placed in the heart of the people an undisposed heart 
to receive what Jesus was going to speak in the synagogue next Saturday. Neither did they believe, nor did they accept, and neither did they want the people to accept. He's an outcast. He has no fellowship card. He don't even have an organization paper with him. He doesn't have nothing like that. What is he? Some renegade boy that was born down here. He legitimates birth by a carpenter home. That's a mother conceived him before they were married. Notice how they start bringing out things of Jesus. And he goes on to say, conceive him before they were married. And they're trying to hide the thing up with some supernatural thing. That is exactly what many are doing at this time. It is a living picture of all that is going on. And many don't realize at this all this, but since it is being fulfilled in such a simple and clear way, that very thing causes them to stumble, to disbelieve, to indispose the brethren, to listen to those words of teaching, which was already prophesied to be taking place under the tent. And they're trying to hide the thing up with some supernatural thing. Now they will say, now this one comes to say that he is the sent one, that in him such a thing is fulfilled. Now they come to say that he is that. We know that when the Messiah cometh, he'll come down the corridors of heaven and go to our own high priest and say, here I am, Caiaphas. Many are waiting. All of what is already happening, they are waiting for it in another way. They are waiting for him to appear again and come and preach, come and speak. All that he has been already saying for about some time. What they are waiting for is already happening. It's the same ministerial spirit. He goes on to say, but we find out that he didn't do it that way because it wasn't written in the word that way. It was a man-made tradition that caused them to believe that. The word has said that he would come just the way he came. And there he stood, reading the word, and saying to them, This day the scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. And still they failed to see him or recognize him, like they did in all other ages. And he drew the ages and the cornerstone. Noah could have said the same thing the day that he entered into the ark and the door closed. Remember, it was God who closed the door. And it is God who closed the door for the dispensation of grace. And it is God who closes the door for the transformation for those who are going to be transformed he is the one who will close that door Noah could have said the same thing the day that he entered into the ark and the door closed Moses couldn't have raised that window in the top of the ark look out upon the congregation remember God closed the door and he could have said this day the scripture is fulfilled in your eyes but it was too late for them then he had preached a hundred and twenty years and he writes 120 years to try to get them into that boat that he had built telling them that the scripture said thus say the Lord it is going to rain the same thing that has been said atomic fire is going to rain on this cursed world on this world of sin and they have been told that there is only one door. There is only one hope. The second coming of the Lord. 
which the chosen ones of God are taking advantage of. And we are receiving all that teaching to escape the divine judgment that are to come upon the earth. We are receiving the preparation to obtain that rapturing faith and thus walk on this path that we are taking toward the promised land of the new body. And we shall be like Elijah and like Enoch who walked with God and was transposed. He was raptured. But we must know which way to walk. But they waited too long. But Noah could easily say that today, this day, the scripture is fulfilled. And Notice, let us read a bit more, it says. Moses, the same day that the pillar of fire came down on Mount Sinai and gave witness to his testimony, Moses could have said, this day the scripture is fulfilled. Moses, you know, was a called man of God, a prophet. And while he was being called, being a prophet, he had to have a supernatural experience. In order to be a prophet, he had to meet God face to face and talk with him. And another thing, what he said had to come to pass, or no one would have believed him. So no man has a right to call himself thus until he's talked face to face with God on the backside of a desert somewhere where he meet God himself. And all the atheists in the world could not explain it away from him. He was there. He know it happened. Every Christian should have that experience before they say anything about being a Christian. Your own experience. Now, you see how at every time, as he tells us there, Noah could say, this day the scripture is fulfilled. Moses could say, this day the scripture is fulfilled. And today, we have repeatedly said it, and we say it. This scripture is fulfilled in your midst. The scripture of the fulfillment of what God has been carrying out according to his program, which is to bring the rapturing faith, to bring the fulfillment of what was spoken that the thunders would be. The revelation of the second coming of the Lord, the revelation of the seventh seal being opened to the church, which would give them the rapturing faith. In other words, the one that is giving us the rapturing faith. And we cannot say anything else, but unto whom shall we go? As it is said there in these last verses of that chapter 6, verse 60. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus, knowing himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Does this offend you? What if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. From that time many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him. I wanted to read it again to continue from where we were reading. See how many have stopped walking with Jesus? And he goes on to say, Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the word of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve? 
and one of you is a devil, he spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it was that who should betray him, being one of the twelve. Now here, Peter tells us about that revelation that God gave to Peter of who Jesus was. Because they realized that the only one who had words of eternal life, even though they were things they did not understand, they did not comprehend. But to whom were they going to go to? To whom shall we go? Peter said there, and, and to whom shall we go? To whom shall we go in this end time? We can say with certainty of heart and with conviction when we ask ourselves that question, to whom shall we go? We can answer, Lord, we will go to you. We will believe in you in the manifestation that you are fulfilling in the midst of your church, in the midst of each one of us, because only in you, only in the fulfillment of the tent vision, only in the fulfillment of the teaching under the tent, we will obtain the rapturing faith. We will obtain that eternal and glorified body. That is why we hold on to that word. We hold on to the message. And we will continue to hold on to that teaching. Being prepared for our adoption. To whom shall we go? If only you, O oh God, creator of heavens and earth, in the full fulfillment of the manifestation that you are carrying out in the midst of your church is where we will reach that peak point of your manifestation in all of your fullness in the midst of your church so that in those days when the resurrection takes place we are transformed we believe in your coming Lord as the lion of the tribe of Judah we believe your promises we believe what you are speaking at this time and there, each one can identify himself, not as those who stop walking with Jesus, but rather with those who ask Jesus the question, but to whom shall we go? There is no one else on planet Earth who is bringing words words that are being incarnate in every chosen of God to bring forth that rapturing faith. There is no one on this planet Earth that has been fulfilling what God already promised in the midst of His church that He would fulfill and would be fulfilling at this end time. But it is the one of whom God had already spoken of. God has prophesied that he would be doing all that the Father tells him to do. Because everything is according to his program. And everything is in the will of God. What Jesus came to do was to fulfill the will of God. Compassion equals is doing the will of God. It has been for me a great blessing and a privilege to be able to send these words of greeting under this topic. Compassion is doing the will of God. May God bless you and God keep you all.